Before, when we were talking about um, the four parts of the camera, and let's refresh our memory, what are the four basic parts of the camera? Lens, aperture, shutter, recording medium, right? Um, one of the most important parts of the lens is, I'm sorry, of the camera is the lens, right? Uh, take your camera, if you would, please. Grab your camera. Take the lens cap off, if you would, please. It doesn't matter if it's turned on or off at this point. Just go ahead and make sure the lens is on there. Grab your camera. Take the lens cap off. And I just want you to look through the lens at something. I don't care. Pick a, pick a subject. And, and if you remember, in terms of focusing your lens, and remember this semester we will always be manually focusing. So on these Nikon cameras, now uh, if you're using your own camera it might be different, but on these Nikon cameras, the focus collar, the one that's going to sharpen what you see as you look through the lens, is the collar on the end, right? The large collar that I'm turning here, that's the zoom collar. If I look on top of the camera lens, there's these numbers 18, 24, 35. That's because I can zoom, zoom in, zoom out. As I look through the lens and I zoom in and zoom out, then my subject either looks closer or farther away. But if what I look, when I look at the camera lens, if the subject looks blurry, then it's out of focus. And to focus it, I need to turn this small collar on the very end. So I need to turn this collar on the very end. If you would, please, go ahead and just look through your camera. Let's all set our focal length. Let's set our zoom at 35. So turn the focal length, the zoom collar, to 35. And then point your camera at a subject, again, it doesn't matter what it is, and, and make sure that as you're looking through the camera, make sure that what you're looking at is in focus. Remember, we're going to be manually focusing. So on your lens, you might have a little switch here on the left side that says AM. Make sure it's on the M for manual focus. Because remember, if it's an autofocus, as I have this camera turned on, and if it's an autofocus, if I point it at something and push the shutter release button down halfway, it'll focus itself. We don't want that to happen. We want to manually focus it. So again, make sure it's flipped to manual focus. Go ahead and look through the lens, right? Now what I want you to do now, if you're using your own camera, don't do this. Keep your lens attached. Yes, question asked. Mm -hmm. Mr. Do yes. you uh, prefer to look through the lens with one eye open or both eyes open? I, look, I usually just look through with one eye. And actually, let's do something really quick. Eric, put your camera down. All right. <clears throat> <laughs> this is a good thing to know about yourself, especially in photography, and that's to know uh, if you are right eye or left eye dominant. Did you know that one of your two eyes is dominant over the other, meaning that it, it really does most of your focusing for you? This is especially important uh, for marksmen. So if you're, a, if you're a shooter, for example, and you're looking through the scope of a rifle, you should, if you're right eye dominant, then you should be looking through the scope of your right eye. If you're left eye dom dominant, you should actually be looking through with your left eye. This is important when you're working with microscopes to make sure you adjust the microscope appropriately. It's also true when you're using binoculars. And how do you tell if you're right eye or left eye dominant? Everybody put your camera down for a moment. We're going to do something. You're going to take your hands and you're going to make a little triangle like this in front of you. Okay? What I'm going to use is I'm going to use the clock on the wall. It doesn't matter what you use. You can just pick something. If you're in the back of the room, you can pick like that uh, socket, the uh, wall socket. I want you to hold your hands out in front of you. And I want you to put the object between, right smack, with both eyes open. I want you to put that object right smack in the middle of your triangle, okay? So with both eyes open, I want you to put the object right smack in the middle of your triangle. Now what I want you to do is I want you to close your right eye. All right. Now, is the object still right smack in the middle of your triangle? All right. If you closed your right eye and the object is still right smack in the middle of your triangle, since your left eye is the one open right now, you are left eye dominant. Now open back, both eyes, both, both eyes back open again. This time, again, with both eyes open, put the object right in the middle of your triangle. This time, close your left eye. Now your right eye should be open and your left eye is closed. Is the object right in the middle? Yes. Then that means you are right eye dominant. Does that make sense? Now the reason you should know if your left eye or right eye dominant is, when you use an SLR camera like the one we're using, you really should be looking through the eyepiece with only one eye. Which eye should you use? Your dominant one. If most people are right eye dominant, anybody else weird like me, I'm left eye dominant. All right? Which is odd. I'm right handed but left eye dominant. So actually when I look through the camera lens, I actually look through with my left eye, not with my right eye. All right? 
right, so thank you for bringing that up, Ron. You should know if you're right or left eye on. So as you look through the camera, look through the camera, through the viewfinder with your dominant eye, and just the one eye. Now, I don't necessarily close the other eye, but I do just look through it with the one dominant eye. Okay, now what I want you to do, take the lens off the front of the camera, go ahead and set it down. You just set the lens down on the desk. Now what I want you to do is just point your camera, again, at whatever you are taking a look at before. All right? Yeah. What does it look like now? There's a blurry mess, right? Now, you can see stuff through there. Like if I, I, like PJ's right here in front of me, I can point my camera, I can still kind of see her, but it just looks like a blob of her, right? It doesn't, I'm, I'm not calling, I'm not saying anything bad about that. <laughs> but I'm just saying what you see is a blob, right? You need that lens, otherwise what you see is just a big blur, right? The lenses are necessary, right? Just like in your eyeball. If the lens of your eyeball is not working properly, what you see is just a blur, right? So, in fact, when we talk about lenses, <coughs> glasses, or contacts, the term that's used to describe them is they're called corrective lenses. And the reason they're called corrective lenses, let me erase what I got written here for a second. Is because when light travels through a lens, right, and lenses generally take two shapes. If we look at a lens from the side, so here we have, here I have a lens here, right, this big round lens. If we look at the edge of the lens, the side of the lens. Lenses that have a bulge, so they bulge out, those lenses are called convex, convex lenses. Now on the other hand, if we had a lens that narrowed, kind of like an hourglass, we would call that a concave lens. Convex, C-O-N-V-E-X. All right, but if it, if it narrows like an hourglass, then it's a concave. Now the lenses that we have in our cameras are actually a mixture of a few of these, but the majority of them are these convex lenses. Now when light travels through a lens, right, now light goes through the lens, means it transmits. But when it goes through the lens, it doesn't go straight through. When it goes through the lens, it bends. So as this light goes through, it actually bends. It turns inwards. That bending of light, that change of direction that happens, we have a word for that. What do we call it? Refraction. Refraction is the bending of light. It's the bending of light. Right, I'm going to pull up Pull our presentation back up here on our overhead. Sort of, yeah, I'm going to talk about that in a second. You're on the right track. Okay, so let's talk about the difference between reflection and refraction. So. Now, I'm a pretty good photographer, not a great artist, so this is a pretty rudimentary image here, but I think it defines pretty well what I'm talking about. Reflection versus refraction. We said that light can do one of four things when it hits. One of the things it can do is reflection, which is what is illustrated here. Light traveling hits the surface and bounces off. That's reflection. But when light goes through, if it goes straight through, we call that just straight transmittance. But notice that this light, as it goes through this, let's say this was a piece of glass. When it goes through, it doesn't go straight through, does it? Notice it is bent. And that bending of light is called refraction. You've seen refraction before. You may not have realized that's what it was, but you've seen it. For example, um, here we have an image of a, a glass of water. So we have a, a, a clear piece of glass, a glass that you drink out of, full of clear water. And then behind it are these just straight lines. That's, that's not um, photoshopped. That, that is simply as the, as the light travels through the clear glass, it bends. It warps a little bit. That bending of light is known as refraction. 
You've probably seen it if you ever go to get in a swimming pool. You ever go to get in a swimming pool and you think the step, you know, you're going to step in the swimming pool. You think the step's closer than it really is, right? You go step in and you almost fall in. Guess what that is? That is refraction. If you've ever looked at a, a glass of water and you put a straw in there, you ever sometimes look at the straw, sometimes it looks like it's bent? It's not really bent. It, it, it's an optical illusion caused by refraction. I think uh, it was seems I think it was last last week that Chris had met brought up about the waviness of the of the air above the road when it gets hot. Yeah. Guess what that is caused by? Refraction, right? Or this is this happens to me sometimes. Maybe you're swimming in a swimming pool, right? And as you're swimming, you notice oh there's a, there's a quarter at the bottom of the swimming pool, and you want to go grab that quarter. And and if you're like me, you go to grab the quarter, and then you go to grab it, you miss it. Is it because, did I miss it because I have bad hand-eye coordination? No. I have awesome hand-eye coordination. I play Halo all the time on Xbox. I'm really good at it. But the reason I missed it is because there was an optical illusion. I thought the quarter was in one place when it was actually in a different place. And it was because of refraction. Let me draw for you on the board what, what that looks like. So you're swimming along here. So here's the, the nice blue water here, right? And uh, here, here's my, here's my maybe, maybe because of the chlorine, maybe my eyeballs are really bloodshot. All right, so there's my eyeball. All right, so here's, here's the quarter down here at the bottom of the swimming pool, right? Now, when the light, where's my black marker go? Where's my black marker? Oh, there it is. When the light that is reflecting off of the quarter and bouncing up towards the surface. So the light is traveling up towards the surface. As soon as it breaks the surface between water up into the air, the water refracts the light. It bends it. So it turns that light here. See that change in direction? Now, the thing about our eyeballs is our eyeballs are stupid and don't realize that happens. So when we see stuff, we see in straight lines. So actually, our eyeballs and our brain, therefore, is telling us that the quarter is right there. So our eyeball thinks it's right there, but in reality, it's right here. So when I go to grab it, I miss. That is an illusion created by refraction. So far, so good? Very likely test question. Blank is the bending of light. Refraction. Refraction is the bending of light. In a camera, what is responsible for bending light? It's the lens. What sort of things bend light? Glass. I showed you that in a moment. This picture right here behind me. As light passes through a glass lens or a glass jar, it's going to bend. All right, so here, here PJ has a, a clear plastic bottle with clear water in it. Right? Light goes through it, correct? In fact, if I hold it up to my eyeball, I can see through here. The problem, though, is as I look through, you guys look funny. Right? And that's because the light that's traveling through here is being what? It's being bent. It's being refracted. Exactly right. You're on the opposite side. Uh, I'm on the opposite side. Sometimes it'll reverse it, too. Exactly right. So, does the light bend going into the water? As it comes out. Actually, actually, either way, as it goes in or as it comes out. As soon as it goes from air to water, or as it comes from water to air, it bends. Okay, does it bend the same way coming out as it does? Yes, later? same angle. Which is interesting. Um, did you know that there's people who, who uh, fish with a bow and arrow? Instead of a... Yeah. a yeah. So you can, you can take a bow and arrow, you, you, you tie a line, a string, to the end of your arrow, and then you, you stand on a boat or on the shore of a river or whatever, and you, and, you, and you knock that arrow, you pull it, and then as you see a fish swim by, you shoot your arrow into the water, and hopefully you hit that fish. And then if you do, there's literally a reel on your bow, and then you reel in that fish. You can do spear fishing too. The difference is you're throwing instead of shooting. There's a trick to it, though. You have to be careful. Because when you go to shoot that fish in the water, the fish is actually not where you think it is. Because, remember, the fish is under the water, and what is the, what's happening to the light as it comes out of the water? It is refracting. So you have to compensate... You have, to, you have to aim just a little bit lower than you think. You see refraction all the time. You ever been looking at a fish tank and this fish swims by and then suddenly it like, seems like it disappears? 
and that's because of the refraction of the glass in the water. Here's a cool example, this image here, right? The photographer, the camera is actually slightly submerged, right? So you can see, it looks like the girl's head has been sheared off, right? This is not, this is not photoshopped, right? This is not a trick photo, this is a result of refraction. When my wife and I and my kids, we were at SeaWorld last year, and you go to uh, see like the, they have a big massive tank, right, where Shamu is, and you can kind of go down below, <coughs> and sometimes the big huge killer whale swims by and suddenly it seems like it disappears. And it's because of the, the curvature of the glass, it's that refraction, right? All right, here's another cool example of refraction. So water obviously refracts light. All right, so refraction, what is it? Refraction is the bending of light. And in our cameras, lenses refract light. That's a good thing too. Because if we didn't have any sort of refraction, any sort of uh, bending of light happening, we'd have no focus. As light travels through a lens, let me draw my illustration again. Are you guys pretty impressed with my artwork? Yeah. It's good. good. Again, like I said, I'm a pretty good photographer, but not, not, a, not a great uh, illustrator. All right, give me markers again. In your eyeball, remember your eye has the same four parts of a camera, right? Camera has recording medium, lens, aperture, shutter. Eyeball, the shutter would be the eyelids. The aperture would be like the pupil. The, what would be the recording medium in your eye? The retina, and then of course on the front we have a lens. So if we took our eyeball, pulled our eyeball and sliced it lengthwise, right? So here's our eyeball. Here's the lens right here in front, right? And then we have that opening in the pupil that light travels through. The, of course the eyelid sits in front, which opens and closes like a shutter. And then on the back of the eyeball, that's the retina back there, correct? When light travels through the front of the eyeball, we need that lens there. Because what that does is it takes all the light, which is scattering off in all sorts of different directions, and it focuses it. It takes all that light and it bends it so that all of it focuses right here on the retina. Because it's on the retina where we have those photoreceptors that allow us to actually detect light. In a camera, what would we put right here? The recording medium. If it was a film camera, we put it right here in the back. In your digital camera, what do we put right there in the back of the camera? Our sensor, our CCD or our CMOS sensor. Now here's the thing. What if this lens is not working properly? Right? So what if this lens is not focusing properly? What if the light coming into your eyeball was focusing in front of the retina or behind the retina? What would your vision be like? It would be blurry. So what do you wear? Corrective lenses, glasses, or contacts to, to bring that into the proper focus, right? Or, like the video we saw, you could have laser eye surgery to correct it, right? The way laser eye surgery works is it reshapes the, the lens so that it focuses properly. So far, so good. I have a question. Yes? Um, I don't know if you 